Hey y'all, and welcome back to Hobo with Wood. This is part two of two in a video series <clears throat> on correcting problems with files that you didn't purchase from hobowithwood.com. Uh, if you haven't seen the first one, I'll put the link to that uh, in the show more section. Uh, you don't have to watch it first because the, they are really two unrelated videos. One's not dependent on the other, but they are dealing with the same file. One was adding um, elements to the file. Now we're going to correct all the problems with the file. So stay tuned. Now, let's take a look at all the problems with this file. So, in fact, I'm just going to start over again. Go new. No. Import. Alright. I'm going to get rid of the door. I'm going to get rid of the toolpath. All right, now that is going to be the project as he bought it. Now there are a couple of problems with this. It is it is marketed as three millimeter Christmas Christmas lantern. At least that's how he had it saved. I don't, I assume that's how it was marketed. But if we uh, measure these tab heights. If you look there at the segment length, they are three, <clears throat> three millimeters. So it was designed for three millimeters, and that's how it's labeled. I don't have any three millimeter wood. My, my three millimeter wood is about 2.7 or 2.75 millimeters. And I want a good tight friction fit when I put my stuff together. So I would want to resize these slots and tabs. In fact, let's look at the slot width three millimeters. So a three millimeter slot with my 2.75 millimeter wood would be a very sloppy fit. <clears throat> and I don't like sloppy fits. So Lightburn has a great tool in it where you can select everything, go into tools and resize slots and selection. Now I'm going to show you things you got to look out for when you go to use this tool. I've got, I've got everything selected and I go straight to this tool, resize slots and selection. Before you start worrying about all your material thicknesses and what they are, what they were, what you're going on to be, look right here for any warnings. Your selection contains the following unsupported items, grouped shapes. If there are any groups, Lightburn will not recognize it. So if we tried to go in here and, and mess with any slots or tabs, nothing's going to be recognized because right now it's all grouped. So we're going to cancel and just we're going to continue to hit ungroup until everything's ungrouped. Now if we go into resize slots and selection, we just checked it with our ruler and the old material thickness or the tab height is three millimeters. The material I have is 2.75 millimeters and I want to change my slot width. It's not seeing anything. It's a, I, I measured it, it's three millimeters, but even if I increase my tolerance to a millimeter, it's not seeing any slots. Why is it not seeing any slots? Slot depth, nope. Slot width, nope. Tabs, wait a minute. Why is it seeing tabs where there should be slots? And why is it seeing tabs, why isn't it seeing tabs where there are tabs? <clears throat> there are lots of problems going on here and these up here are neither slots nor tabs, and it's recognizing these as tabs. So there's, and like I said, this file is a really nice file, but it's not light burn friendly. And we're gonna fix all of that really, really easily. First, I'm gonna show you why it's not recognizing these as slots. And then we're gonna talk about how to fix it. So if we, I'm just going to pick a single slot. And 
I go back in there and look at that again, resize slots, and we go look at tab height. If we zoom in close, you can see it's recognizing all of this side, all of that side, only part of this side, and none of this. Well, the fact that it's not seeing this whole thing right there, it tells me immediately, well, there's a node right there. A what? A node. There's a node right there that's stopping the light burn from seeing that as one complete line. It's seeing that as two lines. And if you go to the ruler, a minute ago I measured this right here and you can see it as three millimeters. If I come up here to measure this one, there we go. 2.53 millimeters and 0.47 millimeters. Together they make three millimeters, but there are two segments there. You can't have that when you're trying to resize slots and shapes. If we go into nodes, you can see there's that mysterious node that's right there. And if we were to look at a couple of these, got to go into select tool first, and go into node editing, you can see there's an odd node, same thing there. So these, they're not all, and that one, that's got an odd node, but it's in a different position. It's not on, on the side, it's on the, the long part. So that's why it's not wrecking those as slots. All right, so why isn't it recognizing these as tabs? Don't know, we'll look at that in a second. But first, I'm gonna show you how to fix this slot issue. And it's gonna fix some of the tab issue too. With everything ungrouped, which really doesn't matter if it's ungrouped or not, but everything's ungrouped, we're gonna go right to our offset tool, select it at everything on the work area, and it's crucial that actually it's not, you need to select everything in the pattern, whether it's on the work area or not. If it was a large pattern, you're gonna come out here and scroll and select everything. Then come over here and do an offset, and you're gonna do a zero offset. Doesn't matter if you go inward or outward, because you're doing a zero offset. Doesn't matter if you go round, beveled, or corner, because it's zero. But what does matter is you want to do, uh, you want to select the resulting objects. You do not want to do outer shapes only, and because if we zoom in tight here, if I turned on outer shapes only, it's not going to pick up on any of that. In fact, we'll just say okay. See now, all that all that goes away. So you don't want to do outer shapes only. Undo. Go back to offset. We have everything selected. You want to turn off outer shapes only. We're doing everything, zero offset, inward outer don't matter, round and red don't matter. You want to delete your original objects and select the resulting objects, and you want to optimize or simplify the results and say okay. Now when you've done that, you had everything ungrouped, but now everything is back in a group again and you need to ungroup it. So why it's all selected, just go right up to ungroup, ungroup it. Still all selected, so now you can go right back to tools and you can go to resize slots and selection. Now look at there. Now it's starting to notice some slot depth, which those aren't slots, those are tabs, and that's gonna be a problem. Slot width, but look at there, all of the slots are fixed. All of the slots are now being recognized. Tabs, okay. We got tabs, all right, they got a tab up there, but that's not a tab. See how it's selecting that whole side of that design? Well, we don't want that. And it's not getting this as a tab, and it is getting this as a slot, along with this, some other anomalies. But these are not slots, and you don't want to have those adjustable, because cancel. We're going to go into our pencil tool. I'm going to go to the, uh, actually, we're going to first deselect everything. There we go. Now I use my pencil tool, select a layer two so you can see it better. If I come right over here to this corner, I'm just going to just draw a straight line across over to the next corner. And now I'm going to put this on, or go back to the uh, resize slots and selection. 
And if I change this slot depth, and let's say we're going to go from three millimeters to four millimeters, see the arrows just moved downward. If I make that change, you see what happened? These edges over here don't move. And that's the side, that, that, that corner is a fixed point in your design. That's where your pieces are going to meet and line up. So when you go to snap the, the lead or the top onto this piece, it's going to come to right here and stop. And if it's four millimeters, then this is going to protrude one millimeter higher than this tab. And this will be a one millimeter gap where it will not fill. So you don't want that to be a slot. You don't want it to be recognized as a slot. And now the way you do that is you add a node. So first, let's get rid of this line. And we're going to select that and go into node editing. Now I'm doing this out of order intentionally to show you what not to do. I'm going to use the letter M to insert a node in the middle. It actually doesn't even matter where you put it. If you just come over here and put an I for insert, or if you put an M for middle. As long as you've broken up that segment into two segments, it will no longer recognize that as a slot. I'll come down here and do the same thing. I'm just going to do M and M. And now with that selected, I can just go straight into tools and go into resize slots and selection and look for uh, slot depth. It's not recognizing anymore. Slot width, it don't recognize anymore. Tab height, it's, it's recognizing. It's recognizing the sides of it, which we don't want, but it's not recognizing these two right here. So now we need to get rid of those and we'll do the same thing by putting a, a node in there. So we're going to hit cancel. And since we're already in node editing, we just go right back in here and hit the letter M and letter M. And now you go back in here and tools and, and we're just, I'm just showing you progress as we go. I don't need to do this. I'm just showing you. So there, that took care of those tabs but it still have these right here that's not being recognized. Our slot depth is fixed, slot width is not a problem. It's just the tab height. We need to fix those tabs. Now, why is it that working? I don't know. So let's take a look. We did our offset and that took care of a lot of the problems, but it didn't take care of all of them. So let's zoom in here and take a look. Now, I already see the problem because I know what to look for. Right now, it, to some of you, it looks like that's four nodes, and that's what you need is just four nodes to make a tab and or a slot. But right there, if you notice, if you get in close enough, that's not a single node. That's two nodes right there. Far enough away, you don't see it. And when you did the offset, Lightburn didn't acknowledge that as a two nodes. Select that and hit the letter D. And select that and hit the letter D. Now, if we go into node editing, or not node editing, resize slots and selection, and we look at tab height, there we go. Now we're seeing all three tabs. No longer seeing slots. The sides are not a problem. That piece is now fixed. And you're like, oh man, okay, that's just one. There's a total of six of them. Well, we we'll won't worry about the lid, but the other five we do. Other other four. <coughs> Excuse me, take a drink here. But let me show you why I was talking about I was doing things out of order and why I, and I was doing it on purpose. So we'll cancel that. So we've got everything fixed, but I'm gonna undo and I just put those nodes back into play on both of that. Now, I've, if you remember, we'll go back and we'll look here. Tools, correct resize, slots and shapes. There's no slot depth. There's no slot width. And now we only have two tabs on the top and bottom. Cancel that. I'm going to do an offset again to see if that will correct those tabs. Zero offset. Optimize. Delete originals. Select the resulting object. Okay. Now let's go look at tools, resize slots, and selection. 
Wait a minute, our slot depth is back. It fixed one of those tabs, but our slot depth returned because when we did that offset, it eliminated those nodes that we put in there to fix the problem to begin with. So you have to think about the priority when you're doing this. Uh, you don't want to go in and manually insert a bunch of nodes and then turn around and say, you know what, I'm going to try this offset one more time. Offset, delete original, okay. Because when you do, it's going to undo all the work you just did. And you're going to be so aggravated. But fortunately, you've always got that undo button right up there that you can hit the undo button and erase that previous one you just did. But if it's absolutely required that you do the offset to fix something that's going on, now you got to go back and fix all those things again. So you want to try to identify where your problems are. You might do that offset two or three times. I, and because tab height. All right, we've done it two or three times now, three times at least. And it's fixed three, uh, five out of the six tabs. It didn't fix this one down here. So now I'm going to, now that I see that something's not right, I can look, okay, there's the problem. Select that, hit D, delete it. Now I also know that I need to put a, a node here and here and here and here and here and here. So when, it, because when I looked at this immediately, I knew what I needed to do. I didn't need to take the time to do all of this because I already knew. I've done enough of it to know. I could have fixed that one issue with that in a, you know, 15, 20 seconds. But I'm trying to teach you what to look for and then what order you need to do these things in. So now, tools. And a lot of people have already gotten frustrated and bored and either tuned in and zoned out or skipped ahead and they missed what I just told them about priorities and what order to do things and they're they're going to be frustrated but shame on them for not watching and paying attention uh, so now if we look here at slot depth there's not a problem slot width not a problem and all my tabs are working it's great we got that one fixed so okay that's great and I actually I just changed the slot or the tab height on that didn't really want to so what I just say undo and I put it right back all right, so that is fixed and it works like I want it to. Now I can select this. I know what to look for. I know what my problems are. If I go into node editing, I can zoom in and look. And well, there's a double node. I can letter D, delete it. Insert, middle, middle. Same thing on the sides, middle, middle. Come down here, middle, middle, look for any extra nodes. You may have to go in real tight to find them. There's one. Letter D for delete, not the delete button, but the letter D. And I believe that's got them all. And now I'll go to tools, resize slots and selection. No slot depth, no slot width, but we got tab height. So see, that's how quick that can be fixed when you know what to look for. Doesn't take long at all to fix those issues when you know what problems to look for. It's okay. And here we're going to look, and I can already see right there, there's a double node right there because how dark it is. See, that's a double node. So I can use that offset technique. And I'm going to go ahead and do it again, right behind itself. Got rid of it. Got rid of them. That one didn't. Select it. Letter D. Come over here. Middle. 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 And middle. And to double check it tools, resize slots and selection, no slot depth, no slot width, and only tab height and all three of them. Okay, done. Now another thing that you can do and what I would do 
is I wouldn't go in here and fix all of those. What I would do is I'm going to group that and I'm going to dock it to the left. I'm going to grab the next one and group it and dock it to the left. I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to group it and dock it to the left. And one last time. Group it all and dock it all to the left. Now, since all of these are identical, I'm going to uh, actually un take all of this, ungroup it. I had to group them in order to get them all in the right position. Now ungroup it, and I'm going to select all of those and hit the delete. And now I'm going to take this one that I've already fixed, use my array tool, and move it out of the way. And I'm going to say I want one, two, three, four of them with zero X spacing and say OK. And now all of those are fixed. All of them are ready to do. I don't have to edit all of them. I edit one and replace them when they're all the exact same one. And I can double check that. Grabbing those tools, resize slots and selection. And now I got those two little things I'm going to fix. They're not really that relevant. It will affect your outcome on your design. There we go. So we're only going to be affecting our tab height. And so I need to change, I need to insert a node there and there. So I'm going to say cancel, go to node editing, and I'm going to put one in here. And one in here. And you can double check it. Go right back in there. Slot depth, slot width, tab height. That's the only thing being affected. And it's the only thing we want to be affected. So you can say, okay, all of those are fixed. And the reason you're seeing all that right now is we're in node, mo node mode. <laughs> so if we go to our select tool, now everything looks good. All right, now the door, that hinge. Tools, resize slots and selection. It's wanting to recognize the hinge. That little tab that sticks up, that's what's going to fit into this little circular cutout on the bottom and this little circular cutout on the top. That's going to allow that door to pivot and swing open. Well, the width of this piece right here is not contingent on the thickness of your material. And that's what changing your tab height is all about. You're doing that to. Uh, to match your material thickness. Well, it's not relevant when you're talking about the width of the design here. And if you do change this, then you would be changing the requirements for the size of the hole and you have to alter several things. So your best bet is not to change that. Plus, if you do change that, say if you're, if you're like I'll be working with, say I'm, some of the material I'll work with is 4.3 millimeters. If I change that, now look at how wide the gap is here versus how narrow the border is over here. So now you've just put your design off center. So another reason you don't want that to be changed. So put that in node mode and insert a middle node right there and make that no longer recognizable. Now there was something up here that was being recognized that I don't want to be. So let's find it. Slot width. There, that one. All right, so cancel and put a node right there. And now slot depth, nothing. Slot width, nothing. Tab height, nothing. Okay, that looks good. So now we've got all six sides ready. We've got all the slots ready. We got to check these tabs over here. Tools, resize slots and selection, tab height. All of them are being recognized. There are no slots and there are no slot depths. That's good. Those are good. Whatever problem was with those, the offset, the initial zero offset fixed all of them. So now I would save this file 
and it is now light burn friendly. The file was a great file to begin with. It just wasn't light burn friendly. Now it is. And it doesn't take long to find those issues. The zero offset will fix a lot of them, but not all of them. And knowing what to look for and what order to, to make those adjustments in can be a 30 second fix or a 10 minute fix. But you do this, you do it often enough, you'll begin to recognize it and you'll get that, that sequence down and uh, you're going to find that a lot of the files you purchase that you've had so many problems with are because of problems like this. And this will make your life so much easier. But when you buy your files from HoboWithWood.com, you won't have those problems because I eliminate all those problems before I put any of my designs up for sale. So like I said, this was inspiration brought to me by Nick. And I am so grateful that he reached out for, to me for help. I was happy to provide the help. I did it and did not ask for a penny. He did give me a gratuity, and I am very gracious for that gratuity. Uh, that's how I am making my living, is doing these work, doing these videos. So if you have a problem similar to this, you don't want to wrap your mind around it, you don't want to try and fix it, but you would like to get it, send it to me, and you take care of me, and I'll take care of you. Uh, I don't have a set... $75 an hour fee. I don't have that many requests that I'm in such a demand that I can justify doing that. I enjoy doing this and I enjoy helping other laser makers just recognize that this is my sole means of income and my time is valuable and I appreciate it if you do show some source of thanks. Uh, consider becoming a patron on Patreon. Uh, that helps me help those who are not in a position to do much. There are a lot of seniors on here that are doing the lasers that are on a very fixed income, or I like I like to say, I'm on a broke income. Not ain't nothing fixed about it, it's broke. So becoming a patron on patreon.com slash hobo with wood will help me continue to keep this channel going and help those that aren't in a position to do much in the way of helping me when I help them. Uh, a super thanks down below if you don't want to become a patron and you just found this extremely informative and you want to say hey man great job here's a biscuit <laughs> i would appreciate it uh my next video i'm going because this is not my file and i can't share this file because it's not mine but it was relevant and showing you what the problems were it is a great file if it's your file kudos it is awesome I'm going to be doing a from scratch design of a Halloween lantern. It'd be this same basic concept because, I mean, you know, they didn't invent the idea of a hexagon shape, six sided shape, and the T light, you know, lanterns. But I'm going to do all Halloween artwork. And I'm, that video is going to show you how to use the Boolean tools, how to add the artwork, leaving the pieces that you want, subtracting the pieces you don't. Uh, setting up uh, slots and tabs uh, m my way. There's a hundred ways to do it. There's There are more efficient ways to do it, but with my brain, the way I do it is the way I can wrap my head around it. The easiest, is there maybe an extra step or two? Maybe. But it works. It works flawlessly, and it's how I can comprehend it and how I can deal with it. If I get too many steps trying to do too many things at one time I can get confused so my biggest advice is knowing doesn't matter how many steps you need to take to do it but you got to do it in the right order the priority is the thing to remember uh, not if you get three by going one two three versus one three you got to the same place no matter how many steps you took but you you, you got uh, to go in a certain order you can't go one ten three you know so uh, that's it for now. Thank you for watching. Thank you for hanging around. This has been a long video, but there's a lot of information in here, a lot of valuable information in here. And uh, I, thank, I thank you. I thank Nick again for the inspiration. And stay tuned this week for, or the upcoming week for the video where we're going to design a, a very original Halloween lantern. And I will design it from start to finish so you can copy that same process and have the exact same file 
or at the end of the video, you'll be able to go to hobowithwood.com and just buy the file from me without having to create it yourself. So again, thank you for watching. I hope you have a great weekend because this is Friday. Friday! I'm out of here. I wish I was going somewhere nice, but I'm going back to work. Have a good weekend. See you in the next video.